Hey, how's it going? It's Joseph here. Today I'm showing you some basic functions of V-Ray to render up a scene inside a SketchUp. I have a model here that I want to use today which has some furniture inside to test things out. Once you start and launch V-Ray, you're going to see all of these icons within your scene. If not, just right click on the empty area of your toolbar and just find these three things and turn them on and they should just sort of appear somewhere on your monitor which you can position like this. First thing that I'm going to do is extensions in V-Ray and tools and wipe V-Ray data from project. What it does is that it wipes everything of a V-Ray related off of your model. And this is a very useful thing because when you're first starting off, you don't know what all of those values do. And some of the values might have been changed by someone else that you are handed the model from, or you may actually have some of the values that are coming from older version of V-Ray. All of those become very, very confusing. Therefore, I'm just resetting everything as if the SketchUp model has never seen V-Ray around it. So just click that and yes to all, yes, yes and it should have sort of wiped every single values that exists inside of your specific model. And then we're just gonna start a asset editor. And I'm just gonna ignore the materials or the lights or the geometry and then go straight to settings. And I'm just gonna leave that on and just hit render. So once you hit the render button, you should see a V-Ray frame buffer, which looks like this. You'll notice some of the messaging that shows up here. You may also see some messages at the bottom of your screen. Keep an eye on that and it should just kind of tell you what it is doing. First, it has done light cache, which is kind of seeing where the lights are and how the lights are playing within the scene and it's just clearing up some of these noises that you can see within the scene and as it renders it becomes finer and finer and therefore you get much better image i'm just going to stop this one because it's just slowing my computer down just go back to some of the values here first thing is i want to keep it at cpu because if you have very powerful gpu high-end graphics card then it might be worth to change the GPU mode, but a lot of times people don't and we're starting off basic level. So I'm just gonna keep it at CPU, which is known as sort of a default at the moment. Interactive, I'm just gonna turn it off because interactive is what's previously known as real-time rendering. You should be able to see all the changes that you make within the model inside of your frame buffer. And that also eats a lot of resources as well as it's reliant on heavy duty graphics card. Therefore, I'm just gonna leave that out for now. Progressive is something that's been introduced to this rendering method. Previously, you see the buckets kind of go around to these white little squares and they're known as a bucket and they go around and render up a scene after the light cache calculation. It's just something that you might have noticed if you use any previous versions. And Progressive is just sort of a new version and I feel this is a better solution. Also default for this new version of V-Ray. And instead of a bucket that goes around, it kind of clears up a scene as you just saw. And this is slightly better because you can stop in the middle of the scene just like now. You can still get a usable image for just validating your scene. So I'm just going to leave it at progressive and quality is medium. I find medium quality very acceptable and if I need to polish up, I can always do that in the post. Therefore, I'm just going to keep it at that. One thing I'm going to definitely turn on is denoiser. If I turn that on and use it with progressive, basically that is a method to produce an image that is very, very usable in a relatively short amount of time. I'm actually just going to render that. I can just hit this button or one on top here, render V-Ray, and then it's just going to render up a scene with current values. And I notice I have denoiser turned on. Right now it's just rendering everything up on RGB color. I'll leave it at that and I'll further explain later on. So whilst this is rendering up, uh, I'm just going to mention a couple of things. 
camera and exposure value if you slide this thing down to your right it's gonna get brighter seen so notice the number goes down as it gets brighter and left is darker and the numbers kind of go up and this is a bit confusing to me therefore I just click on switch to advanced settings and it gives me values that are known to me. If you're a DSLR shooter or any sort of person with photography knowledge, these will mean a lot to you. The default value that are understood for ISO is 100. And once you type that in and go back to the basic settings, that's the value that we just started off. So 100 as a default often i just use the advanced mode as a 100 if i need to make it brighter and i just up the sensitivity by doubling or quadrupling the number so double 200 and the next number will be 400 800 and this is sort of a standard practice within photography to double up the numbers to go up a stop first i find the scene slightly dark therefore i'm just going to change it to from the default value of 100 i'm just going to double up the amount of light or one stop and notice how it rendered dark so I'm just going to change that and hopefully the next one will be bright enough however it changed from, from RGB color to effects result and if I go here RGB color is what's rendered and you'll notice how there's a lot of noises it is relatively lower resolution however if I just kind of use a scroll wheel up to zoom in you'll notice a lot of noises within this area and what denoiser does is that clear up all those noise this pass is very quick and therefore it's very very effective effects result will give you a result image and if I just kind of zoom out I'll be able to just use this button here save current channel to save an image outside and I want to make it brighter I'm just gonna render again render lost and it should just go ahead and make it slightly brighter since I put in a different sensitivity. Notice the scene is slightly brighter. If you find that that is still not bright enough, I can just stop that. I've already validated my image and just change that by doubling. So 400 and then again, just hit that render last button and then it's just gonna go and render and it should get even brighter this is probably too bright for my taste however if you wish to just take that value then you can just do that i'm just going to leave it rendering in the background and render output this is where i change the resolution of the image that i receive 16 by 9 ratio is pretty standard so I'm just going to leave it at that. If you wish to, you can just match to the viewport so that no additional areas to show up. But um, 1080p is also a full HD. So I'm just going to type in 1920, which is uh, pixels across. And if you just click on this, you should just use that ratio to calculate that and 1080p, which is a full HD. Uh, pixels. Another thing I do is save image. So if you just click that, it just saves image somewhere. Actually, I have to target a location, file path. Just click on that button and then I usually just say desktop and then just give a meaningful name. So test 01 and then save. Then what it does is it's going to save out a last result as a png on that location which is very very useful because you don't want to sit here wait all the time so you just do that and then render and leave and next time you come back to your computer after your coffee or bathroom break then you should get meaningful image and that's usable for you those are just basic basic functions of v-ray so if you had changed some of the things within this dialogue which you feel like you've gone in too far and it's doing something to your scene and you don't know what else to do you can either wipe the entire model which is quite of overkill there's a button here revert to default render settings and then just click that and it should just kind of kick back into default settings and this is a very useful thing when you're just starting off and learning all the basics of v-ray inside of sketchup
thank you for watching this was relatively short video to just kind of introduce you the basics of v-ray for sketchup if you liked it please like it and if you want to continue watching these sort of videos please subscribe until next video see you next time